how to get into art school. So when a lot of high school students look at the portfolio requirements for the colleges they're applying to, they get very intimidated and they feel like their artwork isn't good enough. So what I'm trying to do is create this video so that if you're just finished your junior year and you're going into your senior year, you have all summer to prepare your portfolio and you're going to know what you need. First off, when they say 10 to 20 pieces of artwork, they actually don't necessarily mean finished, polished, fully completed, matted pieces of work. So you're not likely to have that much very, very high quality work, that volume of very high quality work um, by this point in your high school career. Uh, what they mean is to include things like your sketchbook, how you develop an idea. Um, so you might have three or four process images um, for a single piece of work. Uh, they include things like if you sat down with your sketchbook and you drew a still life did you overlap the objects so that some objects were in front and other objects were in back did you choose a light source did you look at how the shadow was cast on the table did you look at things like reflections was there observational drawing going on and also did your skill develop over time so, for instance, what I've had students do is take a photo of uh, a page of figure drawing sketches that they created in, in maybe June, and then a few months later in August, another page of figure drawing sketches, and actually very clearly label them and put them together as one image showing how over months they practiced every day. Um, so what you should be doing is you should also be experimenting with different media. So get yourself some charcoal or charcoal pencils. Get yourself one of those uh, blending stomps. Uh, practice uh, shading. How do you add shadows? Get a set of pencils like from 6B, 2B, um, HB and then a very light H pencil. Get a good eraser and practice adding highlights, midtones, and shadows to things. Don't leave your work flat. Colleges are specifically interested in whether you have trained yourself to draw from observation or not. So that means that you have to do use a great deal of your time looking at things analyzing them and drawing them from observation, from life. Now, that doesn't mean that you aren't inventing anything and that you're not going to draw from your imagination and that you're not going to illustrate your own ideas. Um, that's not what this is about. It's about teaching yourself to see, teaching yourself how to view objects that are three-dimensional and translate them onto a two-dimensional page. And there are things that can help you do that. So I have a great deal of tutorials on how to draw using one-point and two-point perspective. Um, I have a great deal of tutorials on how to, um, you know, look at objects and break them down into shapes and forms. And I think those tutorials are good, but what you really need to do is go out with a sketchbook, sit down, look at stuff, and draw it. And I think you also have to give yourself permission to create a lot of bad art before you can create good art. Um, you're going to make mistakes, and the important thing is to not X them out, not rip up the paper, not crumple it up and throw it away. You don't want to look like you're... Athena and you sprung from Zeus's head fully formed in battle armor, ready to go. That's not what colleges are looking for. You know it's not true and it's just not, it's not the case. And colleges need to see you for who you really are. So you're developing new skills and you're going to make some awkward drawings before you finally get it and everything clicks and you get to that light bulb moment. The process of getting to that light bulb moment 
is far more important than you submitting 20 absolutely perfect, stunning works of art that show the college that they don't actually need to teach you anything because you know it all. Um, that's not what art schools are looking for. It's not reality. It's not who you really are. And the reality is, is that there's always more to learn. There's always more art to create. And there's always somebody who's more talented than you. And there's always something to strive for. Um, when a teacher looks at your artwork, there's always going to be something that they need to critique about it. So, um, I would go to the website's uh, Line of Action, uh, which is Practice Drawing for Artists, and I would also go to the website Pose Maniacs and try and get uh, figure poses where th there's parts of the body that are coming straight towards you or going away from you, and there's parts of the body that are overlapped. And the reason why you need to specifically practice that is because you need to learn about foreshortening. You need to learn how a form looks in three-dimensional space. If something is going straight towards you or straight away from you, it's going to appear shorter than if it's just, you know, facing you straight on. So that, that ability to recreate on a two-dimensional paper... Um, what foreshortening looks like in real life is a skill that you need to develop. Um, we already discussed shading, lighting, uh, overlapping, putting things that are nearer to you as bigger and overlapping things that are farther away from you. Um, things like uh, reflections, uh, shadows, cast shadows. Very often, um, artists who are just developing a skill will go ahead and they'll draw this very beautiful figure but they forget that it's standing on a floor they'll draw beautiful lighting and midtones and shadows on an object and they'll forget that there's also a shadow that gets cast on the surface of the floor they're standing on or if it's a still life the table that the objects are sitting on uh, these are all things that art schools look for um, in the line of action website there's a section uh, where you're just drawing hands and feet so look at the images of hands and try and find hands that are not just flat but curved in space with the fingers curved towards you, curved away from you at different angles. And draw them. Better yet, um, have somebody pose with their hands, photograph them, and then use that photograph to draw your own hands. Um, draw, make your own drawings from your own photographs. Um, if you can get s people to pose for you and quickly sketch them, that's a very good exercise because you're actually translating what you see in three dimensions to a two-dimensional paper. So it's more challenging, but you'll learn more. Go to places like coffee shops, malls, food courts and malls. Sit with your sketchbook and observe people, uh, you know, walking, sitting, reading, drinking coffee and see if you can sketch them very, very quickly without worrying that much whether you've messed up or whether your drawings are very good. If you continue to do this, your skills will develop. You can go back later and look at the sketches and you can add to them a little bit, but resist the urge to throw away or X out or scribble out the bad ones. They are part of your process. Just keep going. Eventually, things will click, things will fall into place, and you will start to get better. It just happens with practice over time. Um, this, is a, this next assignment is one that I've given many times, and I can tell you if I give it to an entire class, two or three kids will do it. The rest of the class will just not do it at all. So I've given up assigning it to an entire class and now I just assign it to individual students if they are interested in applying to art school. I had one class a few years ago where I had, I gave the assignment to the entire class. Three students did the assignment faithfully, did exactly what they were supposed to do in this assignment. All three of them submitted portfolios and got into the art schools of their choice. So I'm telling you this is an exercise that will absolutely 
change how art schools look at you and change you as an artist for the better. It's a vital experience. What you're going to do is you're going to take your sketchbook and you're going to look in the mirror. You can't use, um, do not use a photograph. Stand in front of the mirror and holding your sketchbook in front of you, draw a picture of yourself and give yourself only 15 minutes to do it. No erasing, no starting over, no being like, oh my God, this sucks. No, just draw it, okay? As best you can, and no matter how much you still need to do to make it perfect and how messed up it is, resist the urge to start over and stop after 15 minutes. And don't go back and work into it later, okay? Resist the urge and don't throw it away and don't start over. The next day, give yourself 24 hours, start on a brand new page, do the exact same thing. So for a 10-day period, and it has to be 10 days in a row, okay, you're going to just draw yourself from observation, only giving yourself about 15 minutes to do it. Set a timer and force yourself to stop after 15 minutes. Now, around the fifth or sixth day, you will create your best drawing. It'll look a lot like you. It'll capture kind of your essence. You'll be able to even get some shading in. It'll look fantastic. You'll be very, very proud of it. So at that point, you'll be tempted to stop and say, okay, I hit the light bulb moment. I got it. No. What you're going to do is you're going to keep going for the rest of the 10 days. But this time you're going to experiment a tiny little bit. Try making different facial expressions. Try drawing yourself first thing in the morning when your hair is a complete rat's nest. Uh, try drawing yourself when you don't have any makeup on if you're a person who wears makeup. Try drawing yourself when you're angry and upset, have just had a fight with your best friend or a blowout argument with your mother or you're very upset about something or you've just been crying. Um, try making different faces in the mirror and drawing yourself that way. Try one day just set out to draw yourself with very exaggerated features, almost like a caricature of yourself. Uh, even if you feel the picture is done early, even if it's done before 15 minutes, keep working on it for the rest of the 15 minutes. So that's very, very important. The other thing that you can experiment with after the fifth or sixth day is different materials. Try doing it with a material you're not comfortable with or unfamiliar with. Try drawing it with um, a Sharpie marker in a single line. Try uh, charcoal, even if you're not used to using charcoal. Just don't be afraid to experiment, but wait till after the fifth or sixth day. So when you first start this out, you should be using maybe pencil. You know, make sure you've got a nice 6B shading pencil to add in some darker um, values. But basically, you're going to start out with like your typical yellow Dixon Ticonderoga HB pencil when you draw this. Uh, and you're going to branch out to media that you're less familiar with as you get better. So by the last day, maybe you're using a, a very thin watercolor brush and a set of watercolors. Or maybe you're just using a marker. But... What you're going to find is that around the fifth or sixth day, something clicks and you're going to come up with a really, really good self-portrait of yourself. Um, but something happens when you do this. And again, it only works if you use a mirror. It does not work if you use a photograph. And it only works if you do it faithfully for 10 days. And it does not work if you do it for more than or less than 15 minutes a day. You have to stick to the regime that I'm telling you. But it's weird. Something happens when you do this exercise that unlocks your abilities. All of a sudden, you kind of find that there is absolutely nothing you can't draw as long as you have it in front of you and you can look at it. Like, it might take two or three tries... But for some weird reason, you develop the persistence that you can look at something, analyze exactly how it looks, and faithfully render it 
And if you don't do it on the first try, you can look at the first try and say, oh, the reason why it didn't work is because of A, B, and C. And then on the second or third try, it all falls into place and you're able to just look at stuff, observe it, and, and faithfully render it. Um, so this particular exercise, it's almost like it's this magical way to unlock your superpowers. And the reason why most of the class does doesn't do it is because they're actually not interested in attaining those particular superpowers. So please trust me on this. Do the exercise. You only have to do it once. It takes 10 days, but you only have to do the exercise once. And trust me, your art will get better. And then spend the rest of the summer just teaching yourself how to do anything you don't already know how to do. You're not good at lighting? Practice lighting. You're not good at creating something that looks like it has three-dimensional volume? Practice the type of shading that creates volume. You're not good at creating still lifes? Create a series of still lifes. You are weak on figure drawing? Use line of action and pose maniacs and practice your figure drawing. You have trouble with hands? Do a series of hands. Remember, you're going to photograph this stuff later and you're going to decide later what goes in your portfolio. Right now, you're just developing a body of work and it's absolutely 100% fine if that body of work is just in your sketchbook. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to say is that a lot of artists um, are guilty of creating these images with very light pencil lines and then considering them done. And when the teacher tells them it looks unfinished, they'll take a Sharpie and they'll just mess it up by outlining the whole thing, okay? Don't do that. Outline just the shadow side um, so that it has this feeling of three-dimensional light. If you outline the entire thing, it will look flat, which sometimes that's a preferred look, but a lot of times those flat drawings lack intentionality. What I mean by intentionality is I outlined it because the teacher told me it looked unfinished, not because I looked at it and decided it needed this outline to look better. So when you just outline the shadow side of something, very often um, it has this feeling like the light is hitting it from one side. It has this dimensionality. Um, it has this intentionality uh, that, that the... The artist was thoughtful in how they rendered the piece. And if you just outline the whole thing, it looks almost like a coloring book drawing. It looks very juvenile. Um, the other things to avoid are <coughs> when you're drawing a light source, um, when you're drawing a, a landscape, uh, a still life, do not include the light source. Okay? Um, especially do not put a sun in the corner of your sky. Um, you, uh, I've seen high school students, believe it or not, do the most elaborate pieces and then finish it off with this horrible, ugly little corner sun, okay? It's fine if you're in kindergarten, but it really ruins a piece of artwork's uh, sophistication level when you add a corner sun. It basically screams, I don't know what I'm doing. So don't add in a, a sun in the corner. Um... A lot of people feel like, okay, I can't add a sun in the corner because the teacher's telling me it looks like a kindergartner did it. Maybe I'll add in a sunset. Here's the problem with that. If you have a sunset in a picture, it means that everything in the picture is silhouetted because it's backlit, okay? If the light is coming from in back of the object because the sun is setting, then everything is basically this black silhouette, this black shadow, okay? If the light is coming from the side, you'll get this very interesting, what's called caroscuro. A caroscuro is an Italian word that means light and dark. And basically it means that you'll have interesting dramatic lighting that'll give your drawing a beautiful sense of volume, okay? So don't put a sunset in, don't put a corner sun in, and resist the urge to include the light source at all. So if you have a lamp lighting a still life, let that lamp be off the edge of the paper. Don't include it in your picture. Um, there are some exceptions. I saw once a beautiful painting in a museum 
where somebody was holding a candle and everybody was gathered around that candle and each face in the circle was lighted a different way by the candle and the rest of the picture was very dark. So it is possible to create an image that's effective using a light source. But for the purposes of just developing your art skills from the ground up, as a beginner, I highly suggest that you at least create a series of images where the light source is off the just, edge of the page. It's a good exercise in thinking about the light, how it hits the object without worrying about the light as it's leaving the light bulb or leaving the sun. So that your focus becomes how the light plays off of the image that you're looking at. Um, consider doing more drawing from actual three-dimensional models and less drawing where you're copying pictures. Um, if you do copy pictures, try and copy pictures that you took, you photographed yourself. Go through your phone, and especially, like, if you have an iPhone, you can create different albums. So what I'd like you to do is start taking your artwork and your, your photographs that you took for fun and categorizing them, creating different sub-albums. So, like, I have a sub-album that's just pictures of flowers because I love looking at flowers. I have a sub-album that's just up-close pictures of interesting, weird-looking bugs because I like looking at insects. Um, and then I created another album called Extreme Close-Ups, which is just very close-up images of stuff. I have an album <coughs> of skies, just interesting-looking skies. So I have another album of just interesting-looking sunsets. I have another album of just um two shots of people so it's a picture uh, photographs of two people interacting with one another so you may not realize that you're interested in drawing a certain subject until you notice that you frequently photograph that subject so going through your already existing camera roll will tell you a lot about yourself as an artist um so just to recap, use Pose Maniacs and Line of Action, uh, practice drawing for artists, to uh, draw images of hands and human figures. Try and make sure that you uh, use figures that have foreshortening so that you have um, the experience of drawing a form in three-dimensional space. And also... Do not rip up your papers. Do not crumple them up. Do not draw an X on them. Resist the urge to start over too early. Work through what you're drawing. <coughs> um, people make mistakes. That's why pencils have erasers. If something looks wrong to you, it probably is wrong. Figure out what is wrong with it and work on fixing it. And then, even though your drawing's going to look messed up, it might have a lot of erasures and stuff, work through it and try and resolve the issue. Try and resolve what it is that's bothering you. And then when you're done, try the drawing again, and you might find that it's easier. Uh, save all your sketches, save all your, um, you know, sketchbook pages, don't crumple anything up and throw it away create a body of work if you fill up a sketchbook go get another one keep working uh, experiment with different media experiment with color and color theory um, get some watercolor paint and play around with color mixing and uh, just literally fill up your sketchbook with observational drawings. If something is very, very lightly drawn on a paper, it's not going to photograph well. So if you need to darken in certain areas, consider getting a 6B or very dark pencil. And then figuring out where the light sources are and being very selective as to where to, you put shadows. Well, that's all the advice I have for now. And we'll come back later. All artwork in this video was created by my students 
within the past few years.